And it continues right here with Sakaja Arthur Johnson, the governor of Nairobi City County. He's here for the second hour. Uh, City. Yes, Just for the benefit of those who missed the proverb, mm -hmm. please rem remind us yes, of the proverb. Yes, in case they missed the origin mm -hmm. of that particular proverb, they're from the country of Gabon, mm -hmm. otherwise known as the Gabonese Republic. Do in French it would be Republic? The Gabonais. Okay, very good. See? And the people of Gabon are called what? Gabonese. No, Gabonese. No, many people. Not Gabonese. <laughs> not Gabonese. <laughs> N A I S E. Gabions. Oh, no. Gabions. Gabions. All right. <laughs> Gabu Gabu. Or, or Gabons. <laughs> <laughs> he who is free of fault will never die. He who is free of fault will never die. Yes. Conversation continues. Governor, I just want to touch on, uh, quickly finishing up on this issue of uh, yeah. budget, yeah. bills and all. Mm -hmm. The Your budget for this year yes. is about, what, 30? No, it's more than that. It should be 42. It's, yeah, 42 billion shillings, yeah. all right? Yeah. Uh, I look at it in terms of the breakdown. 21.3 shareable revenue. Mm -hmm. Then conditional grants at 1.2 billion. And you're targeting to raise on source revenue of 19.9 .9 billion shillings. Yes. You have said you've, re you've raised the highest in the last five years at yeah. 10 billion shillings. Yeah. This is almost half of what you want to, you've budgeted for for this year. Yes. What are you going to do to raise 19 billion shillings if the highest you've mm -hmm. raised in five years is 10 billion? First of all, um, if, you're, if you analyze, you know, the analysis we did uh, of the last financial year revenue, uh, so the financial year starts in July. So July, August, sep July 1st we were not in office. August, September is transition. Yeah. October, those were the lowest. You know, from uh, November, December it's been uh, on an upward spiral. Mm -hmm. um, looking at uh, the holes that we've sealed by fully digitizing, um, and how we're now structuring the use of technology. You know. On, on on Saturday, I was in the office um, in the morning getting a presentation from some of my teams, mm. IT teams from Nairobi Water. <laughs> but on GIS, you know, I can be able to, on a map, see this plot is owned by Eric Latif, Akona Bill, Hajalipa mm. Ritz, Ama Hajalipa mm. uh, mm. Just targeted enforcement for our debt collection unit. Okay. And so now that is what we're putting on our revenue system mm. so that we know who owes what where. Because many times, and, 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 and before it turns green, the only way it can turn green is by that money going into our account. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no matter who you know, no one can help you. That's why I'm saying technology in your Adui Awakora. Yeah. Yeah? So until, <laughs> until you've paid and it has come into the system, it will not turn green. It will not. And then we enforce okay. on you. you know? so, so for me, uh, being able to do that, number two in the finance bill, we want to allow people to pay their rates monthly. Yeah. So instead of a huge bill of 200k or 150,000, you know how to break it down and we'll give you 10 months to pay it. Then there can be more compliance. Mm. Um, there are new, some new charges that are being introduced. Some are even lower than they were before. Because we believe that increasing compliance will make you raise more money than just increasing the level of tax. Mm. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. There are these uh, matatus that don't come into the CBD. You know, they apply out a ring road mm. and they go to TRM. Mm. They have not been paying anything, not been getting services. And they came and said, please, if you just charge us a third, so that we're not harassed of those who come into town, we'll even collect for you. I told you about uh, the guys who do the trailers, yeah. who have been paying a bribe of a thousand, but the charge is three thousand. Reduce it to a thousand, they pay you directly. Not that I'm excusing <laughs> the bribery or anything, mm. but you must be pragmatic. To see how do you how do you collect these it. things will work yeah so just the mapping out mm. um the different strategy and uh, decentralizing to the lower to the lowest level mm. is what we see as, as a great opportunity and now that we have a stable a stable uh, system mm. um with partners now we're working with e-citizen mm. and safaricom on our system to make sure that p there's convenience these things work when right. it's convenient for people yeah um it's easier for them to pay and when they see services being rendered to them you know there's a time people in current stopped paying rates mm. <laughs> they said no you know. until <laughs> yeah Mm. <laughs> and uh, okay, anyway, I told them now you guys, me, me Mr. Jaribu, yo, I will I look sure you, you guys <laughs> because I'm giving you services, I'm doing your roads. But, but I'm doing there's, a, there, there's a provision, there's a provision for this one. Mm. It's not they didn't pay the money to the county, but they put it in an account, an extra yeah. account. Mm. Essentially, they were a, providing their own services. Yes, it was, it was a protest. And you see, for a long time, 
people Nairobians provide their own services you collect your you pay a private garbage guy you yep. buy water from a bowser you have a private security oh, but we still do that. so the only public thing you'd use is maybe the road mm. you know when you but everything else and, and that's what we are we're trying to move people from away from that because my work is to serve you and i've told my staff in mm. fact i've given them all books on how the the leadership principles and cadences we're using this year the first principle is an obsession with the customer mm. you know to look at things from the customer's perspective to look at the hospital from a customer's perspective make sure that mm. i want to i want to ask about the nairobi, used, yeah. the nairobi revenue authority yes you said you've brought in prominent people to sit under this authority yeah but has it started working governor yes yes um so we we brought it to life mm. it had been created under the nairobi revenue administration act of 2021 mm. you know the law had been passed but nothing had happened mm. so we just brought it to life we have now um gotten the board the board is going to have hire a director general you know like kiare is doing from within the county or from without um ideally from within because you want people with you know certain knowledge yeah. um we've gotten them office space yeah that mm -hmm. we're kitting out at cbk pension towers mm -hmm. so it, it is ongoing when but that doesn't this, mean that when will it be fully operational the nairobi revenue authority you know you know it is not not fully op it's operational because um even the staff will go there are already staff were in the county you know for, for for most part it's just how nairobi water was formed you know 90 percent of the guys who are engineers at the at city council mm -hmm. moved there but uh, in terms of uh, the launch of it and uh, you know going to the offices and now nairobians know there's an entity for revenue i would give it three months i'll mm -hmm. give it three months from now can i ask Why? the question you say revenue yeah mm -hmm. is it only revenue or does it include investment no in, for investment we're doing something different this is just like a carry you know you have carry and you have can invest this is yes. for collection this, this, this is for collection this is for exploring new ways of getting revenue mm -hmm. you know um we're exploring for instance um an infrastructure uh bond uh, for the city mm -hmm. so they say we will need this and now that other entity uh, that brings together experts you know um and and and, and i'll speak into it then now look at what instruments can you use so is you it know? an independent unit owned by the county government yes yes it is it is semi-autonomous semi you know because because part of the hitches you get in revenue collection is political interference you know mm. that an mca says well, what one was is you know and then yeah. you say now create an entity that is is shielded from that politics yeah, but then therein lies a problem because yeah. if indeed it is shielded because this very problematic issue that we refer to the mcs at are also productive in the sense that they create a, a form of balance now mm. if you create an independent unit what stops it from going rogue no they can't if they go rogue is it they still report to us so they're semi-autonomous administratively in terms of the operation but in terms of accountability they report to the governor in fact the public finance management act is clear that the 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 uh, cc for finance you know mm. Is the authority overall. that then appoints his agent or whatnot so overall is one who has a constitutional responsibility excellency i see the benefits of it yeah but i'm playing devil's advocate here because i see a situation where they're going to say sakaja has created this thing for himself mm. of course you know let me tell you yes you know with with politics and leadership no matter what you do mm. there will always be a complaint <laughs> there will always be the assumption that you're either stealing or you're not doing things right so as a leader what do you do do you fear to be misunderstood or do you do the right thing, do the right thing. and i always say you know as a leader don't fear to be mis if you know you're doing the right thing you've thought about it you've got an expert advice do it then understand later mm. otherwise you'll have paralysis at, you'll never of analysis you'll mm. never do anything it'll be like the story of the guy and his son and the donkey <laughs> you know, you know, then, and then you you never end. You you'll end up doing doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm confident that we will we will hit that uh, revenue, and I'll be very happy to come back here yeah. and report even a higher figure. We'll be looking hopefully. forward to it. More than twenty billion, possibly. Uh, you know, actually, it has a work. Actually, it'll be more than twenty billion. It can. If, if yeah. One of the me. things that you've delved into quite some is Dishina County. Dishi. Um, it's one of the things that you said you would do. Yeah. And then we saw the rollout uh, yeah. of it. So give us a little bit of insight into that and how it's actually working. Okay. It's interesting. I'm going to give this as a caveat because I spoke to a lady whose children yeah. uh, eat in school uh -huh. they didn't eat in school before uh -huh. chances of them coming home and getting a meal were slim look at that so they ate something in the morning yeah because that's what she could do she could provide uh she can see the difference now because they've had something to eat and she can oh, so the school can, is now in she can in yes yeah. she can pay a little bit yeah for each of her three children yeah. to eat in school so we can we see but then how you know, you, you know, I, I saw a tweet by uh, Pastor Ken Ringo, um, a good friend of mine, and he tagged me. 
um, and he said today he had gone to his car wash and he finds the guy the tenant is unusually happy <laughs> and he asks hey kwani ni nini leo you're so happy the guy says man but even as I'm hustling here and I'm not sure what I'll get, I know for sure my kids are eating. Mm. So let me just give a, a quick background. Um, when I was the senator for Nairobi, um, you remember during COVID, a lot of our schools were vandalized. Mm. Uh, desks were taken away. There was, I mean, that COVID time was just a mess. You know, people became crazy. And so I got a donation uh, from uh, Tetra Park and some other partners and said, look, we have these desks we want to give you. Choose two schools. Mm -hmm. So I chose uh, Rail Educational Center in uh, Kibra and uh, Gatina Primary in Nagureti uh, North. And when I went to give the desks now in Nagureti North, I asked the kids, Hey, uh, you know, of course they're excited. Super Senator, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they get excited when you show up. Mm -hmm. So I play with them. Then I say, what do you guys want me to do for you? Mm -hmm. And you'd expect them to say, to party a football, to chase the balls, or yeah. we want a school bus. They said, we want food. Mm -hmm. Man, as a parent, that, you know, when a child says they want food, they actually really need food. Yeah. You know, they actually really need mm -hmm. it. And I said, let me look into it. So I researched this thing. And I realized that there are more kids out of school in Nairobi because... than even the arid areas. Mm -hmm. All interventions before, on school feeding were targeted to nomadic areas. In fact, the body in the ministry that deals with that is called Nom uh, NACONEC, is Nomadic Foundation something, you mm. know, that does school feeding. No one ever assumes that Nairobi, mm. if you have no money, you'll have no food and nowhere to stay. Right. So you can, I mean, just think about more kids not in school in Nairobi than North, yep. Northeastern or mm. Northern Kenya, Turkana, whatnot. And so I tried to bring a law. I studied, I saw there had been the national school uh, Lunch, the National Lunch Act of the U.S. 1946. I looked at it. I looked at other jurisdictions. I saw India, what they're doing. And uh, so I came up with the, with the National School Lunch Act uh, bill for mm. Kenya. Um, processed it in the Senate. Mm -hmm. It went through the, the Senate, but actually it, it, we were not able to finish. Mm. And so the legislative framework was not set up. So I said, as governor, I will try and implement that. Right. So I caught up with a partner. Uh, somebody told me, KJ actually, of the mm. greatest house, told me, come meet uh, Wawira Njiru, see what food education is doing. So he had built a kitchen uh, using CDF, and they were giving children meals at 15 shillings. And I was amazed. And enrollment in the schools that were in that program went up 150%. 150% mm -hmm. enrollment. Um, in addition, performance went up 28 to 30% mm. immediately in the first year. Attendance? Attendance, 150%. 150%, mm -hmm. yeah. 100 of everyone who had been plus 50 percent <laughs> so <laughs> it is <laughs> over and above mm. and so i put it in in our manifesto i even took a presidential candidate then who's not the president to mukarara primary to serve food he said please let this be also the national manifesto and he said they will match shilling for shilling countries that do it so what we've done now is this we've built 10 kitchens mm. in 10 weeks constructed fully following the procurement process one kitchen serves uh, between 10 to 15 schools producing 15,000 meals, mm. 10,000 to 15,000 meals. Our partners have constructed one mega kitchen, we call it the Giga Kitchen, mm -hmm. just here in, in Solaria, <coughs> uh, road, road, uh, is it road C or road A, mm. behind Enterprise Road, does 60,000 plates a day. Mm. Um, the cost of a meal is normally around 50, 45 to 50 shillings. <coughs> Mm -hmm. So we've been able to um, break it down. So we are subsidizing 25 shillings. Mm -hmm. a, chi a Children in Investment f uh, Fund Foundation is doing 20 shillings. Mm -hmm. And the parent pays five, five bob. Shillings. Five bob, mm -hmm. you know. And for five shillings, you get 650 grams of a nutritious meal because now the standards of the food, the quality of the food must be high. World Food Program, World Health Organization standards. Um, and we're trying to also make sure you also get a food mm -hmm. where we can you know if when they're in season mm. but you know the the saddest part these kids who are so excited in fact just after this show i'm taking the french delegation that has come for uh the climate, the climate summit, summit. Mm. so they have a minister for development and their team i'm taking them to olympic um and toy primary mm. uh because they're giving me 1.4 million euros uh additional to the program but what's sad is you give these kids the food they don't finish it they carry it home yes yes for their siblings sometimes for their parents it's really sad, but I'm happy. We've created 1,500 jobs mm. already. Guarantee of continuity, and I think this is the this is the fearful <coughs> yes. thing in the minds of people that yeah. all right. So 2023 came along, yeah. and there was Governor Sakaja who instituted this thing in Nairobi. It's yeah. never been done before, yeah. at least not at a government level. Yes. What's the surety that 2024, 2025? Because once you open that door, mm. 
people who are dependent on just told you yeah people who are dependent on it then become increasingly so you've just said people take yeah. these meals they go home yeah. what is the surety that just keep going to the be governor, there that's the first thing <laughs> 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 re-elect anyway um so what, what we're doing <laughs> that's that's the easier way, that's the easier way right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can guarantee 10 years yeah at feeding. least but but what we're doing is we're, we're setting up now a governance structure yeah so we have the school feeding regulations that we're taking through the assembly so that there is a structure there is a board where i can have eric latif uh, peter Ndogo of safaricom because kenyans are saying man we want to contribute want to participate can i adopt a child for a year mm. can i send two thousand shillings can i send 5k you know in fact i i think maybe in the, after two financial years i may not need to put a lot of budget into it because mm. i put 1.7 billion mm. uh, in this financial year mm. um, i'm waiting for national government because the president said they will also match, match. shilling for shilling mm. because despite the kids in formal schools their kids were in informal schools yeah. and the informal schools they're not at the academies you know nairobi only has 209 public primary, primary, schools, primary which is very low mm. that is what a constituency in the rural area has mm. you know and so you find us a place on Sunday, it's a church. On Monday, it's a school. In the evening, it's a bar. Mm. The in next August day, a it's, a, it's a women's <laughs> meeting. Those ones are not even... They're yeah. structures yeah. that are schools. 50 yep. students, 60. Yep. So we want to bring them in. So what we've done in addition to this, we've agreed with the president, is we're building an extra 5,000 classrooms in the next three years. That is doubling the number of schools we have in Nairobi in the next three years. So I'm doing 1,500. I've put... Uh, now I'm putting in my supplementary 500 million mm. by year. <laughs> and he's doing... 3,500 and he says he can even move it to 4,500 because we have been and that's why even I shared the tear that day because I felt man the government we've just been unfair to these Nairobi kids they mm. have done no wrong mm. you know but we've not invested in them we've not invested in infrastructure for education and education human capital development you know just the lack of food if the kids have nothing in their tummy there's nothing that goes into their minds that's for sure. you know and so you're building a semi-literate generation yeah that you expect to compete globally where we're going to in the next 20 30 years even now the children in mukuru kwanjenga are not competing with children in machakos they'll be competing with kids in japan and in the us and so at that formative stage even for their brain development and growth they need nutritious meals it's i'm concerned about this and imagine 6, or good. so children yeah. in our slum areas who are in these informal schools yeah right and you've talked about there are many this six thousand of them they're not do, 6, do they need to wait yeah unfortunately you know mm. you know i mean unless, how long unless, do they need to wait like unless we get you've just resources. mentioned that the children in mukuru so there's there's a kitchen <coughs> just yeah. down the road yeah. opposite opposite mukuru koruben there's yeah. a kitchen is there no way this program can be rolled out to them so what we're doing they first, are very vulnerable they're very Governor. vulnerable and, and i'm glad you feel it you know and you know even part of our uh, that's why even even during this summit i'm talking to partners because part of our climate action plan is protection of great of, of, of vulnerable communities mm. you know um so no one was being fed mm. now we were able to feed two fifty thousand. Mm. as we speak today eighty eight thousand on board by end of next week one eighty eight thousand will be on board mm. because uh, the kitchens that are not completed are now being completed Getting online with a problem at the, you know when the financial year stops all payments stop in government you have to load new if misusers i found nairobi had more than two thousand if misusers imagine that you really? know more than two thousand like someone who had been fired in somewhere in a cyber uh, putting things on your internet banking you know so i removed all the users <laughs> Because you don't need more than 200. This country. I'm telling you. <laughs> someone who retired, Akokwake who shall go, but can see Logan. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so so <laughs> despite that break now, um, we by third term, actually first term next year, I am seeing our enrollment moving from 250,000 to 350,000 mm -hmm. in Nairobi. And we'll build those classes. But what I've said is the kitchens must run, even during the holidays. Mm -hmm. Because these kids have nothing. Mm. And so that's why we need a lot of support, you know, external support. And then now we can move. So now in this financial year, I'm building another seven kitchens. So that, uh, we've covered all sub-counties. Our partners have gotten resources to build another seven kitchens. There are MPs who've committed to also build kitchens. So for instance, in Embakasi Central, mm. the MP is building. Um, some constituencies need more than one. Because mm. it is, it, it, there's real need. Yep. You know, Nairobi is a place where you can die of hunger and your neighbor is having a party. Urban poverty. Is and people thing. will not know about it. And there's no, no the lack of community. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How many people know their neighbors in your flats? <laughs> you just see this guy in the parking. You can describe them. You, know, you don't know their names. Mm. You know, we're competitive to a fault. When I was growing up in Nairobi, 
man today you're in mama kinyes the next day you're in whose house in fact even people used to you will be punished on behalf someone will punish you on behalf of your parents <laughs> you tell them and they'll give a report in the evening all of you are beaten but there was a sense of community you know that's true accountability for dish in a county accountability um of course through the audit process mm -hmm. the general but that's what i'm saying i want a governance structure and people to contribute i want uh, pwc or kpmg or deloitte or who to say what our contribution is is that we'll come and audit this process mm -hmm. governor, because if there's one place yes. any loss will not be tolerated is in feeding our children mm -hmm. governor could you please talk a little bit more about this governance structure that you want to put in place so so the governance structure uh, that we want to put in place of course um so we already have a, 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 a an mou with our implementing partner yes. so the implementing partner is a non-profit called food for education mm -hmm. and food for education are the ones who are undertaking a lot of the you know day-to-day -day management you know they're just doing the management we're putting in most of the money they're doing the management of the of, of the kitchens the quality control making sure the containers are sealed the vehicles are fueled you know that supplies have come in so they're doing that yeah um but we want to put uh, first of all almost like a cooperation for school feeding mm -hmm. yeah that there's a ceo mm -hmm. who's accountable to the people of nairobi you know a private entity is not necessarily accountable to the public yeah so within nairobi instead of just my director of education or of health because it's under health mm -hmm. because of the nutritional aspect yeah we want that uh, ceo to be the anchor. and a board mm -hmm. and this board we want you know people who are trusted and have been seen to run things properly in this country to volunteer to sit on that board mm -hmm. you know but then uh, we have the private sector involved. Um, so that's the structure I'm thinking about. Those are the regulations we have that we're sending to the to the assembly. And so now when they run an, a campaign on TV saying this with this pay bill, or if you do star six four eight hash, you can be able to support a child. It is now with the public because Kenyans want to 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 support it. The face of Nairobi. Yeah. And I was talking about how it looks. Uh, congestion in the city, yeah. still trash in the city, hawkers all over the place is still an issue, still a yes. bone of contention and the question is okay, so what on earth is happening? What are you doing about that because it's visible. Okay. Let me let me start with the with the, with, the, with the issue of um the environment. Yeah. yeah. And garbage collection. Um so the garbage collection problem is a initially became a commercial issue it became business yeah. what we used to have where the county the city council used to collect garbage more or less stopped yep where we'd have what we used to call camero mm. camero would come you know on tuesday mm. and on thursday mm. we had even the metal beans yep. yeah. written ncc mm. that they'd give us but no people realized kuna biashara hapa let's get a contract and then we take trash take it to dandora, dandora play around with the way bridge and get paid billions it's one of the biggest cost centers mm. what we decide to do is this because number one the manpower do you know the people who used to sweep when i was a child are still there and they're very few and they're old you find a place like embakasi east constituency which is from mutawala mihango donhom lower savannah all of that area mm. has four environmental officers four now you've given a contractor the work to collect garbage but you're measuring him not by how embakasi east is clean but by how many tons they're bringing to dandora mm. yeah sometimes the truck even has stones sometimes they, they water log it mm. so just i've changed that model number one what we've done is to hire young people you know and uh, they should be getting their letters this week yeah. Three thousand five hundred staff between 18 and 28 years old so there's environmental staff who will know mombasa road from a standard group to yeah, thailand yeah. carpet mm. or to Nyayo. these are the people whose work is to maintain this place on saturday i was along Mombasa road with yeah. a huge team um and i put the photos out there and i saw what consistency does do you know there's a section outside the carry four mm. um between uh, bunyala and and uh, and the Nyayo roundabout mm -hmm. where even the road had become narrow because of the dust and the silt <laughs> yeah and so we swept then we brought a truck and, and the road is wider now if that is done every day the city becomes clean so the first thing we've done is to, to employ uh, these young people it's taken a process because you know you have your public service board they have to create the staff establishment they have to advertise these guys came to Nyaya stadium i mean uh, city stadium and so they're getting letters uh, this week mm -hmm. i know at least uh, 1700 of them uh, will get uh, this week mm. yeah and we provided the budget for that number two is to build our capacity as a county so i've bought 24 refuse compactors which are those cameras 
the reef is compactors that you'll be seeing all around uh, the city not old trucks brand new reef is compactors, reef is compactors. those ones are being These fabricated are the ones by com Suze. that compress the taka taka inside yeah and now of course we'll have now the public participation drive or public awareness drive telling you if you're in Isili, these are the days you're supposed to remove your trash you know mm. uh and and i went there to to, to just do an experiment we mm. cleaned the median at Isili, <laughs> collected the trash and i sat there in less than three hours it was full of trash because who throws that trash so these guys pay cbo's these vijanas take the trash and throw it there yeah. in the middle of the road and so now we are working and telling them listen you guys yes you have to earn a living but this is where you'll be collecting on this day put it out on this day we'll collect i've already bought 27 tippers that i flagged off yeah that have come to be part of the of the fleet 10 backhoes 120 skips now those are those be huge beans that we used to have in our estates mm. yeah so already we've gotten 120 of them we'll do more four backhoes and three dozers um so now there'll be that rhythm we know this place is swept every day it's cleaned every day if mm. you, actually if you go to the cbd it's always clean where does because it go to the private contractors so the private contractors who we've given specific duties are going to supplement this not the other way around yeah mm. so what we've done for the first time is to restrict them to specific constituencies so if it is Latif and company, we tell you you are Dagoreti South. Yeah. If you come with trash from Kiambu or from uh, Mbakasi East, we will not pay you. Mm. We will have a system, and, and, and we have already introduced, where the environmental officers, there's a ward environmental officer, there's a sub-county environmental officer, gives you a ticket on the ground right. with evidence mm. that you have actually collected this trash from here mm. and you have taken it to the dump site. I've, I've, I've added a, a new way bridge that we are actually commissioning. Mm. I'm trying to do a route through which why, wh where you drive in and come out is different. So that I don't pay you just for give me trash, but I pay you because the Great South is clean mm. or because Langata is clean. So I know it's taken a while, but this is the only sustainable way to do it. This is to Dandora. Dandora has also been another whole story by itself. And I'm so happy. Are about we it. moving Dandora out of Dandora, the dump site out of Dandora? Yeah. You've recently contracted a company to do that, and then it was all over the news again. There was There's a, a challenge issue about so, it. So, so, so what we're doing is waste to energy project. This is something else that has been spoken about for years, and no one has gotten to the stage where we've gotten to where we've awarded. Um, it's a PPP project. Mm. Uh, we've awarded China National Electric Engineering Company. Uh, they bid for it they did the rfp the expression of interest somebody went to challenge it at uh, uh, the public uh, ppra yeah um we won that last week and so we're moving ahead with that contract mm -hmm. it is going to produce 45 megawatts of energy onto the national grid that will be bought uh, by kenya power you know as the as as, as the off taker um there's so many interests in fact i've just been shown a headline saying sakaja caught in 47 billion dandora scandal you know yes. you know you know you have a situation in this city where when you don't get it or when you don't get a, a, a deal mm. you try and make it look bad you know so you dirty it. so how how are we caught up and there's no shilling the county spend so explain this ppp so it's a public private partnership okay this team is coming to set up the plant the factory yeah um, this plant uh, will be set up in Dandora. The earlier plan was to do it at Rwai. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. um, the idea was to move it to Rwai because, one, of course, there was politics there. Mm -hmm. We were saying, oh, this land was deputy to deputy president, then what not? Let's make it a dump site, etc. But I told them, listen, the people who have suffered for decades respiratory illnesses, mm -hmm. there's even a ward that is dedicated to people of Dandora. Yep. The ones should be the first beneficiaries of anything that comes out of it you know it can't be that you have suffered for all these years then we now create the, the economic output of it goes to Rwai or goes somewhere else so dandora power is going to be in dandora we have 20 acres next to the dump site that is where we're going to be doing it as we do that then we rehabilitate the the, the dump, dump site, site and it can even become a park we've seen it being uh, being done in other parts of the world there's still some some of the gases in there are uh, they, they say the garbage is inert mm. but some of it still has some calorific value that uh, can add onto the plant number two what we're doing is what we call a circular economy uh, for waste management and so in the markets the sorting of the garbage yes. the material recovery facilities is what we're setting up in 17 of the in in, in the sub counties mm. so at what ends up at the factory is what is needed for production of uh, the energy mm -hmm. 
on top of that we've, we we incorporate technology that we put in the chimneys and the pipes yeah i wish i had the specific name that then reduces the pollution that comes out of it so at, we are still in line with our climate action plan it is still eco-friendly and mm -hmm. we produce that electricity it's so exciting mm -hmm. this thing will be done in two and a half years you will see so the solar power come into life this company yes the china national electric engineering, engineering company yeah they will invest they are investing their in money. these projects they will build the factory all right operate it operate it for how many years um i, I need to look at that uh, at the award mm -hmm. probably 10 to 15 years mm -hmm. yeah and once they recoup their value mm -hmm. then they transfer it or we can say since you're running it well keep running it but yeah. now the profits come to us because mm -hmm. for now they are the ones who will be paid for the energy they put into the onto the grid and for me it's a fair deal you know because you know this what we see as garbage to other people is gold yeah you know they see the value in it now the guys who are going to work in that factory is our vijana mm -hmm. is our young people it's those who you know i've gone inside the dump site several times no in fact they were saying we've never seen even a mayor inside here mm -hmm. i have spoken to those families there are some people whose entire lives have depended on that in fact they're asking me please return there used to be um this uh, nas this national air the caterers mm -hmm. yep. who used to bring the waste there mm. and their waste was so good that it was food for them food and say please rudisha what now the contractor yeah i'm telling you this is how people live in the city mm. and so they're excited about that project and the reason why it had always been resisted was because they didn't trust that whoever's in charge is doing it for them mm. if i may ask uh, this contract we have with this china electrical industrial company mm. um yes i understand they are the ones who have invested yeah and it's a ppp yeah so from the onset is there any percentage that the county will be getting in terms of profit what i mean is this yeah. you can graduate it you start mm. at 25 percent and over the years mm. to the point where you actually invest it where they are the ones who now have 10 and you have 90 is it that sort of arrangement it's possible you see you yes. see the stages of word of a contract yes. um give space for negotiation yes you know so 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 right now it's at negotiation stage since it has passed the the appeal was dismissed mm -hmm. you know and and those are some of the things our technical team are exploring with them mm -hmm. you know including in addition to just uh, doing the the waste management when it has been brought to you yep. how do you participate in, in building the capacity mm -hmm. of collection yep. yes. you know from 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 the estates and from where it is yep. that's part of the discussion okay you know with them you said there was this matter of this most expensive real estate in eastern central africa yes okay yes please address that matter do you know <laughs> <laughs> this this country was man we need to write a book you know that railway um, what you call green park you know it was owned by the railway pension uh, team and i knew that because when it was acquired initially it was acquired by kenha for an exit of the expressway they acquired it from the, the pension, railway the pension scheme, yes. that place mm -hmm. where the railway club was yes where the railway club was it yes. was owned by the railway the pension way, scheme the, the, the ground where mwamba rugby club where mwamba rfc was there <laughs> then of course i, I had to go there all yeah. the mwamba <laughs> and they're asking me to return it no, yeah. <laughs> and of course all the Lu luya matangas would be done at united at the club mm. <laughs> so i was a frequent visitor <laughs> but anyway that's why it was acquired and i remember because i was the chair of labor in the senate mm. and uh, rogers washika and the team came saying no we've not gotten it the evaluation they had done through i think is it kpmg or who was at 13 billion but government of course nlc valued it at 7 billion and then somewhere in the middle the plan for an exit stops for the expressway for the expressway and they say who else needs this land oh dear and so it was a, by the way oh nairobi metropolitan services can take it for a bus a bus stop mm -hmm. they did trials they all failed because of first of all for local commuters it can't work mm. okay. just crossing uru highway once you have dropped there the hordes of people crossing the yes. road will be impossible unless mm. you do a tunnel and the cost of that infrastructure doesn't make sense at all either way where we want to do a park and ride or where you're dropped off should be a mm. bit outside town where you're dropped off and there's a shuttle that yes. now comes in yes. or even a tram that comes into town that is what our design is so what we've said what value can you derive from it we have designed uh, drum roll <laughs> <laughs> we've designed the nairobi convention center mm. where we're doing we have no performance venues first of all mm -hmm. or proper convention where, where can you hold ten thousand people mm -hmm. 
if uh, Jay-Z came to perform in Nairobi where would he go to sorry you who know is, who is Jay-Z? Oh, hey, let me on. say no, <laughs> Obio, the one of Beyonce. Beyonce's husband oh, Beyonce. you know the one of Beyonce <laughs> no Beyonce I know yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 or even more seriously yeah if like this climate summit mm. you know mice which is meetings incentives conventions is a huge huge potential in Kamana for this country yeah because Nairobi is strategically lo- located really? five hours from Dubai you're in Nairobi eight hours from London you know 13 from from uh, New York and so what you're creating is an ecosystem of meeting venues mm. that hold huge capacity a hotel or two there that are already designed and we'll want to come and do it PPP so imagine this because now I've given approval to Kenha to do an exit of the expressway there mm-hmm. as well so we'll have the exit into CBD right there at Green Park it was designed in such a way that one line feeds into the convention center, another one goes into Haile Selassie, Kenyatta Avenue. Okay. Yeah. So you've come, you've landed at the airport. In 10 minutes, you're in your hotel room. If you feel like golfing, you just cross the road, you have the Railway Golf Club. Yeah. Or you can take a walk in the new Uhuru Park. Mm. Or it will attract so much to this country. So much. When I, I was away for, for a while and I, when I landed, I decided not to call my, my driver or anything. So I got into an Uber. Mm. So when I'm in this Uber going home, this guy says, you know, mambo ni noma, but kuna mikutano zina kuja mingi sana. I'm like, what do you mean? I said, forget those big ones at his G, UN, what not. Mm. He's saying he's seeing people are coming back to the city, mm. to Nairobi. They're seeing Nairobi as a destination. The weather is good. The location is good. We're the center of the world. Yeah. But Kigali had started taking that away from us. You know, with their convention center. Yep. The Kigali Convention Center. And the guy who helped them get that is my friend Masai Ujiri, who's the president of the Toronto Raptors. He told me, he told me, sucks. This is we wanted to do it in Nairobi, but you guys weren't responsive. We meet your guys, we feel hey VP Nini, let's do it, but there's no the consistency. <laughs> there's no follow-up, there's no discipline. And so we, once we do it, and imagine now we partner with KQ, yeah, our national carrier, and tell them, listen, bring guys to conferences. Let's give them an offer. If you're in this class or if you're coming for this conference, as soon as you land, yeah, mm. you in 10 minutes you're out of the airport. Your bags will follow you to that hotel. You know, we tag them. We give you an experience. We even drive you maybe even through the park. We can offer, we have such an offering that no other city in the world has. We are the only city with a national park in the capital and in the background, you're seeing the skyline of the city. Mm. And then we'll have the Bomas Convention Center as well that the national government is doing. We still have KCC. We can do for you a city tour. So that is where we're thinking. I think it's more futuristic. Um, it makes more, it, it creates more value from that 13 billion piece of land mm. than a bus stop that will not work. Public participation on this? Public participation will go on. Mm-hmm. You know, we've just conceptualized it and we want to give it to the, to the people. Mm. Um, to so at what stage shall people come and give you feedback on this? I, th- I, th- I think once uh, we, we, we present it to the assembly, mm. yeah, so now public participation will be conducted by the county assembly um, of, the, of the city. Mm. Um, we're seeing different proposals. We're seeing, do we do it as a straight PPP mm. or as a privately uh, initiated PPP, mm. yeah. which is a shorter route? Yeah. Because also you don't want to take another two years just trying to contract this thing. You know, mm. we need things to work. Lazima my work. We do yep. chop chop. Um, there are guys who've uh, offered, they've done designs, they said, look, we'll run this thing for you um, for this number of years. Or we put our money to build it. We're looking at what is the best value for mm. the people of Nairobi. But it's really exciting, you know, what, what can come out of it as, as, as a city. Even as you look at this, what's still your Achilles heel in the city? What's the thing that keeps you up at night that you're thinking, I wish I could get rid of this problem? It's not even getting rid of. It's building the culture of ownership by the citizens that this is our city we own it mm. you know if you look at a chama that is being set up or if there's an estate committee uh, that you want to do a harambe 400,000 shillings the standards are high say oh let baba come up with the treasurer no 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 <laughs> mama shiro is better you know the standards because they own it but when it comes to your 42 billion people say ah that is a kaja's work mm. You know, I was in Kahawa the other day, and I find this lady who has a stall. She's selling uh, vegetables, and she asks me, Mona up and chafu. So I looked at her. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at her like, surely, ma'am. Nani ametupai mboga. This mboga looks like what you're selling. Mm. Yeah? If, unless we take also responsibility and move from just haki to wajibu mm. you know, if everyone swept outside the house, <laughs> the world would be clean mm. so let me provide for you the beans 
yeah, which I'm providing. Let me provide for you a schedule, but take care of it. So now what I've told my MCS to do in the finance bill is put a penalty. If outside your business, outside your home, there is this level of, and we can tell this is from what you're doing. Yeah. You know a guy doing sugar cane, just cutting, 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 chopping it to yeah. the ground. Do you have to pay a very Wait serious, to waiting for me to pick it up. You're in traffic, you throw a bottle out. You throw a banana out. So for me, it is the softer vibe of who we are, yep. how we see our city. I am Nairobi. You know, that for me is the biggest thing. Because well, you sort of the software, Sakaja, you yeah. visited people's homes. Yeah. Did you find dirty homes? Inside their homes, no. Exactly. People take care of their homes. What that lady was asking you yeah. is where is the bin? Yeah. No, they have beans. That, in fact, that particular market has a skip. But she's saying, same thing happened uh, Toy. The time when there was a fire, I remember going the first part of Toy, yeah. there's uh, the drainage. Nichafu, it is full of what they're selling. This person asks me, I tell them, you guys, first of all, you can see you've encroached on the road. Yeah. I, have, I have not uh, sent my guys to evict you. Sijawa skuma, sijawa piga. Don't you think you can at least even just collect this? You know, you go to Ngong Road, the guys who are doing uh, furniture, mm. they had encroached the entire walkway. I just took a walk one day and asked them, now, my friend, so you're here, you're selling. Have I sent guys to collect rates from you? Have I sent guys to evict you because I know you're earning a living? Now, this walkway that was done using your money, do you think it is fair when you block it with your furniture? To date, those guys have moved back without any further enforcement. So just building that story mm. just just letting people know and i think you guys can help us mm. what to know i am nairobi nairobi is us there's no one else who's going to come solve it there's no magic wand there's no button on the press that uh, that will change the city yeah yeah and i love what citizens have done some of the guys we've caught and then uh, you know they, they have cases in court stealing drugs it is because of the public finding a way to be able to talk to us saying there's a syndicate that puts the dower you've brought into an ambulance the ambulance goes to a facility there's this chemist that is buying our stuff there is this and slowly we're unlocking it so my appeal is a partnership with the people of nairobi mm. you know let us provide we'll provide the platform through which you can engage with us let's work together i love the groups you know i'm in the groups for kilimani i see what they're doing i'm in groups for you know nyawe estate whatnot i see what community can be able to do our work is to facilitate i'm not saying take the work i'm not mm. shucking off responsibility but i'm saying the only way to achieve it is collectively you working know, if together you go, if you go to the states new york i mm. love new york mm. it's such a mantra that no matter who the mayor is yep. the people have pride in they their own city, the city they own the city so for me that is the biggest thing the that, people of kileleshwa kilimani and other areas yeah. and all the neighborhoods in nairobi have been complaining about noisy bars they've been complaining about it but who goes to those bars so still those people yeah. but what happens is that you go to a bar in another neighborhood yeah and so you live in uh, Runda, you will come to Kileleshwa, party. If someone wants to put a bar in Runda, you will resist. Mm. Because you don't, we, we're not thinking of the next person. And so when I started that onslaught on them, I realized there were certain gaps that we're now uh, sorting out within our laws. Because environmental enforcement needs to be done in a certain way. I recently issued a directive saying we will not do night raids anymore. Because, you know, these night raids, night raids are creating, have created rent-seeking yes. opportunities. You go to a bar, guys are drunk, someone is scampering for safety, they break their leg, a uh, drunkard person now fights my officers. Mm. You, know, you know, nothing good comes out of that environment. Mm. You find some officers have taken the alcohol, you know, they confiscate it, and then now you have to pay 200 Gs. The DJ is arrested. The DJ has made no mistake. We have no contact with the DJ. Mm. The DJ is playing, you know, and probably they assume this place for it to have been licensed. They have done their soundproofing yeah. and they're allowed. So we're doing public participation and we're about to conclude. One, on the zoning of areas that can have nightclubs yeah mm -hmm. the zoning of those areas so we're talking about cbd some parts of westland some parts of industrial area some shopping centers you know that can have a nightclub but which still need to be uh, soundproofed number two where where can you have a bar in a restaurant mm -hmm. and if it's a bar in a restaurant what time does it close of course you know we like neighborhood pubs you know yep. where you can go uh, have one in the evening or two talk with your friends it's, it's not a disco mm. you know it's just a place you'll have a beer or two or, or cultural establishment yeah and then and the, yeah i like that mm. and then go home <laughs> and it closes at 11 or at mm. midnight we'll allow that but i've said what we will do for enforcement of noise we come the environmental management uh, um, mca act mm. has the levels of noise we measure the decibels we come the next day we measure we give an enforcement notice We'll tell you that this thing you have gone beyond. We'll enforce during the day. 
will come close your body in the day. You will not have uh, clients uh, being hurt, uh, being asked for bribes, being bungled into yep. our trucks. Yep. We'll just come. Tomorrow you'll go to your club, you'll find he's not there. Because we can't, as it were, kids cannot do homework because we're, we're barbers uh, enjoying downstairs. So how long do we give this whole process? It's It's ongoing. It's ongoing, you know. Um, the the publishing of uh, those areas, mm. uh, I approved it in cabinet last week. Yeah, uh, though there have been an omission of East Eastlands and Eastern Eastern Bypass and Kangundo Road. Yeah. So I said amend that. So I passed it in cabinet. It is going to be in the papers. People can uh, speak to us on email and mm. give their suggestions. But so the zoning, just for the zoning. So this zoning is throughout the county. Throughout the county. Throughout the county. Yeah. Is it only for cultural establishments or is it also for, uh, <laughs> for outstations stations yes. and, and other no, places no. that one sees mushrooming? No, that was uh, the different process I spoke about earlier. Yes. Uh, for, uh, the, the development control uh, and uh, land use that is now with the county assembly. Yes. This is just for cultural establishments. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I like how you call it. <laughs> so by December, <laughs> yeah. so, so by December, so, so by we December, have order in this? We should have order. And we want residents... To actually partner with us mm. do you know there's a friend of mine um he, he became my friend uh <laughs> later <laughs> what was he before, before he became no I, I didn't know him uh, okay. <laughs> but this this guy lives in uh, kilimani mm. next to a, a, an establishment that i closed you know for a while until the the they soundproofed the, the soundproof. now this guy was always on my inbox Telling me, my friend, I can't sleep. My kids can't sleep. I'm going crazy. Mental health, what not. And so I took guys to check it out. And I said, actually, this place, it's, it's terrible and they have complete impunity. Yeah. I closed it down. When I closed it down for them to comply, the first phone call I get is from a politician. Senior politician. Saying, why, why are you uh, doing this for the bar? The owner of the bar is from my constituency. Mm -hmm. Why are you... Uh, picking, on picking on our people mm. by coincidence i said please hold i called this guy asked him where are you from by the way he's from that constituency the complainant uh -huh. <laughs> so i said can i just connect you guys on this call mm -hmm. because the person who's being affected i said we, we don't look at things that way mm -hmm. it's not about tribe it's not about that businesses of this community or that community it's decency yeah some of these establishments leave alone the music the kind of conversation that is happening at 1 a.m. Yeah. It's not stuff you want your kids to hear or to be part of or to see. Mm. There's another side of town where they're doing something called a looter. Where in the morning now the disco starts again. Yes. It's like a relay. Mm. Now there's another DJ who comes. At 8 in the morning. This place is a residential area. People are going to church. Mm. You've seen videos of girls dancing naked on bonnets of vehicles. Yep. Even just decency. Yep. The moral fiber of society. Some things we do. I mean, we can't legislate on morality. Mm. But if you want to do it, do it in a place where you people who want to do that, be mujifungi uko, don't disturb anybody else. The reason why people are, are not in your club, they're at home, is because they want to be at home to sleep. Mm. So, the same way you're not being forced to make people sleep in your bar, don't make people, force them to dance mm -hmm. in, a, <laughs> in their houses. And I'll give you an, a, a final example. Uh. There's one establishment that is next to a mental institution, uh, uh, a rehab. Yeah, mm. a place where people have gone, they have mental health issues. You're recovering. Possibly part of what you're recovering from is substance addiction, mm. substance ab abuse. So you are there, you're recovering. You're on day sixty. In the middle of the night, you're just hearing someone saying, hey, why now? Me, I'm a way nuke, I'm a way now. No. <laughs> Madness. <laughs> You'll go back to that. You know, you lose all <laughs> the progress you've made. So, so we just need order. Barrels. Yes. Barrows, it's, it's so exciting. Um, so, the reason why we wanted to set up and why we're setting up Barrows mm -hmm. is to bring um, services closer to the people mm -hmm. and to have finer decision making. You know, that, that you know, the issues of Kayole. Essentially decentralizing. Decentralizing it further. It's yes. a new, it's another level of devolution. Mm. Um, I mean, it's not lower than the word, no. but it concentrates your issues. Right. Yeah. And so we've, we were done with the legislative framework for it. We're using the County Government Act. We're creating five boroughs. Nairobi North, East, West, South, and Central. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, publishing it uh, for people to say Westlands and Roisambu should we be together or Westlands and uh, Kangwari I mean and 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 and, and Agorete North yeah. just that that is a process that is now going on we've already budgeted for the borough headquarters so you don't have to come to City Hall yeah 
of course payments and everything is digitized but even for service mm. you know to sort out a, a land matter um to sort out an issue with your road to talk about drainage if you're in uh, nairobi east yeah which is Ruai, the, the, the dandora ztc go sort it out there and you have officers who have the uh, capacity competence and authority to solve things there now what else we want to introduce is now borough boards so that in the borough we get all the resident associations that are within that borough to come together and have representation mm. such that we have participatory budget so we say okay there's the budget for things that cut across you know yeah. city stadium is for everyone yeah. the hospitals are for everyone what not but you guys here let's say we have 50 million shillings what what would you like what intervention would you like the, the county to do for you in some areas they'll say we want a public swimming pool mm. in another area they'll say actually why don't you do sheds for our border border people so i'm really excited we've made progress we've put it now and as you say this is now my first budget mm. um so we've put it um in our budget by the end of this year what i want to see you know this is showing you sakaja at one mm. when i visualize sakaja at two i want now to see that the barrels are fully operational the headquarters have been set up in some places it's actually just uh, completing stalled projects like if you look at kibra mm. at joseph kangete grounds there was a huge you know administration block and the social facility that was mm. being that got stuck during kiddo's time no one has thought about it again we've revived that one that one can be a barrel headquarter um for that for that area mm. so that is where we are um on the on the barrels we've already advertised uh, for barrel managers you know and uh short listing is, is being done mm. so you know you have your sub county administrators you have your ward admins so the sub county administrators will now be reporting to a borough manager okay yeah um at, at that level and the borough manager now reports to what we're calling the city manager the city manager is a position i want the deputy governor to be able to to run mm. so the deputy governor sits with these five administrators um i mean the person who is thinking about the roads in ngomongo should also not be worrying about the roads in Karen, mm. you know, surely. Uh, the issues are very different. The person who is accountable, and, and that's why things used to, you know, fall, fall, apart. fall apart. Because you, you go to Westlands, and you call the environmental guy and say, why, why is there a problem in Westlands market? Why, why, why haven't you sorted this out? Say, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. I'm in uh, uh, Mbakasi. Oh, no, I'm sorting out something in Langata, you know. And at that level, mm. so you need somebody at that level of leadership. It's what we call single-threaded leadership. One of the you know styles that Amazon has used and become biggest company in the world. That you have somebody senior enough to have the authority to run a team and to make decisions, mm. but whose focus is in one specific small area. That so you segment. Find yes. That segment of just these three constituencies. And they're answerable for only what's happening. They're answerable here. only for there. Okay. Kama akuna maji, we have an answer. We made progress on water before you ask mm. we made progress on what we conclude as you conclude nairobi you remember i told you during the debate nairobi has not pro uh, developed new sources of water since 1997 and the 1997 target was for a population of two million people so we have had four water sources 1904 uh, 1907 uh, uh, kikuyu springs one percent of our water then 1938 again the colonial government they did uh, uh, ruiru mm. then uh, 1956 we did sasumwa mm. finally in dakaine so nairobi needs 850 million liters a day but we only have 525. fortunately one of the projects that is nearing completion and by december should be done is a northern collector tunnel it was stuck where we unlocked it i went to the president he helped me get nlc to give compensation mm. for the guys on the way leave they've been compensated the pipes are coming that will give us 140 million liters of water number two what have i been able to do and i thank god for that we've been able to get support from the koreans of 100 million euros the 100 million euros which they're going to loan to a uh, nairobi water company mm. which is an, a company under us is going to help us do northern collector 2. northern collector 2 is going to add another 180 million liters of water meaning by 2027 the gap will probably be just 10 percent as we even explore the next source so on water I'm, I'm i'm really confident there's a video there's a photo going around about the state of pipes yeah uh, and and i was able just to just put it on google search it's a fake photo <laughs> that photo is is thailand you know so it's not an Nairobi photo no it's not an Nairobi photo my phone has gone <laughs> so an Nairobi photo actually if you google that photo yeah mm. it will show you where it has been our pipes are not like that but we need to 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 really um rehabilitate and overhaul a lot of the systems we're mm. now moving into smart metering mm. um we're concreting some of the infrastructure that's why there's never been water in langata because of the illegal connections in kibra mm. and so we are we're working with with what we call the water police set mm. up in the national government and so areas that were getting it once we now get thrice areas that are getting thrice we'll be able to get four 
sometimes as we look at even water harvesting etc i know we're pressed for yeah for time completely <laughs> governor we thank you very much for joining us today thanks and thank please you. call me again Please come again. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> we're not even taking we're not even taking calls. Yeah. yeah. Sakaja Arthur Johnson is the governor of the city county of Nairobi. He's been our guest for the last 2 hours, accounting for his last 1 year in office. Yes. Come every quarter. Okay. You need an accountability. Yes. Can we do that? Yes. yes. I, I, every quarter. I'm happy. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day.